Looking at the illustration of the neuron in the center of the screen here, the dendrites are the structures that transmit nerve impulses toward the cell body. Axon terminals at the other end of the neuron interface with other neurons, dendrites, or effector cells. The nodes of Ranvier are gaps between the glial cells of the axon, actually speeds the transmission of the nerve impulse. Glial cells provide the myelin sheath, a fatty insulating layer around myelinated axons. The white appearance of the myelin offers groups together central nervous system neurons as white matter. Neurons with unmyelinated axons in the central nervous system are called gray matter. Schwann cells are glial cells that provide the myelin sheath for neurons in the peripheral nervous system oligodendrocytes for the central nervous system. Only Schwann cells have the capacity to regenerate, providing neural repair in the peripheral nervous system, but not the central nervous system. Multiple sclerosis. A reasonable analogy to describe the relationship between glial cells and the axons to which they attach is that of the plastic that insulates electrical wire. Strip away some of that plastic and you risk a short circuit. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease where the body's own immune system breaks down the myelin in the central nervous system. The signs and symptoms are varied depending on where in the brain or spinal cord this degeneration occurs. So multiple sclerosis then is the breakdown of the myelin sheath of the central nervous system by the body's own immune system. The nerve impulse. Experiment on a frog leg using the redox reaction of two metals causes it to twitch, confirming the electrical nature of nerve tissue. Using a voltmeter, scientists measured the potential difference across the large axon membrane of a squid. Different from a wire in three ways, conduction is slower. Potential difference is attained due to the movement of ions rather than the movement of electrons. And zero degradation of nerve impulse quality from source to target, whereas there is a resistance in a wire. So nerve impulses have an electrical nature, as confirmed on a squid's axon. Different from electricity, conduction is slower, potential difference is attained by ion concentrations, and the impulse doesn't degrade. The cytoplasmic side, the inside of the membrane here, is negatively charged compared to the extracellular side. The separation of charge means the cell is polarized and is called the membrane potential. It is achieved by a high concentration of positively charged sodium ions on the outside relative to a lower concentration of positively charged potassium ions negatively charged proteins, and charged chlorine ions on the inside. The resting potential, that is when it's not stimulated, is minus 70 millivolts. This uneven distribution of ions is maintained by the actions of protein gates in the axon membrane. This active transport of ions across the membrane keeps the charge distribution unequal and the cell polarized. It occurs all the time because these ions also diffuse down their concentration gradients through ion channels. There are more open potassium ion channels than sodium, contributing to the overall positive charge outside the cell. Without the action of the pump, as in death, the ions would diffuse until no net charge exists. So in this diagram, we've got a carrier protein in the membrane of the axon and it's shaped in a way that allows up to three sodium ions to enter. This is active transport and requires the energy of ATP in order to initiate a conformational change of the protein. In other words, the protein physically changes shape. It expels the sodium ions while at the same time makes itself available to pick up two potassium ions. It undergoes a second conformational change, bringing the potassium ion to the inside of the cell, ejecting the potassium ion and making the protein available again for three sodium ions. 
So in review, the sodium ions on the outside gives the extracellular surface a positive charge. The comparatively fewer potassium ions combined with the chlorine ions and negatively charged proteins gives the cytoplasmic surface a negative charge. Separation of charge keeps the cell polarized. In other words, it carries a voltage. A resting membrane, which is one that isn't carrying a stimulus, is negative 70 millivolts. The membrane potential provides the energy for the generation of a nerve impulse in response to an appropriate stimulus. For this slide, I'm going to be introducing some new terms, depolarization, action potential, threshold potential, and so forth. See how they relate to this diagram. Depolarization occurs when the resting potential changes to a lesser amount. Looking at the y-axis on this chart, at around 55 millivolts, negative 55 millivolts, it varies in some cells, but it's about negative 55 millivolts, the cell membrane at the node of Ranvier changes. This change is called an action potential, a wave of depolarization that sweeps along the neuron. This action potential is caused in response to an action potential occurring at an adjacent node. This is an all or none response because depolarization between negative 70 and negative 55 millivolts, no action potential will occur. Anything less than negative 55 millivolts and up to zero millivolts will cause identical action potentials. So negative 55 millivolts then is called the threshold potential. When the threshold potential is breached, Sodium ion gates open in the membrane and sodium ions rush in down their concentration gradient and by charge attraction all within a millisecond. The membrane voltage becomes plus 35 millivolts causing the sodium ion gates to close and the potassium ion gates to open. Gates are iron specific protein channels in the membrane. Potassium ions leaving causes a repolarization of the membrane, momentarily reaching negative 90 millivolts, called hyperpolarization, causing the potassium ion gates to close. The action potential of a neighboring node of Ranvier causes the depolarization. Let's have a look at the action potential more closely here. The action potential of a neighboring node of Ranvier causes the depolarization. The sodium ion voltage gates open in response and sodium ions rush in, down their concentration gradient and attracted by oppositely charged ions and proteins. The voltage changes to plus 35 millivolts. So in depolarization, it's the reduction of the membrane potential from the resting potential. An action potential is caused by an all or none response when the membrane potential is less than minus 55 millivolts, the threshold level. This results in sodium ion channels opening. Sodium ions rush in due to diffusion and charge attraction. The change in membrane potential causes the sodium ion gates to close and the potassium ion gates to open. The potassium ions diffuse out, causing a momentary hyperpolarization of the membrane, down to negative 90 millivolts. The sodium-potassium pump then works to restore polarity to the cell's resting potential and return the potassium ions to the inside of the cell and the sodium ions to the outside. So the potential reaches plus 35 millivolts, causing the sodium ion gates to close and the potassium ion gates to open, whereby the potassium ions then diffuse out. Now the significantly more positive charge on the outside again relative to the inside of the membrane. Repolarization is when the membrane potential changes back. In fact, it overshoots. Membrane potential drops to about negative 80 or negative 90 millivolts. It's described as hyperpolarization. 
which causes the potassium ion gates to close. Normalcy has not yet been restored. Potassium is on the outside now, while sodium is on the inside. Before another stimulus can trigger another action potential, the ions have to be returned to their correct positions. It only lasts for a few milliseconds, which speaks to the efficiency of the sodium-potassium pump. This is an illustration showing the sodium-potassium pump. The sodium-potassium exchange ratio is 3 to 2. Three sodium ions uh, replaced by two potassium ions. Action potentials only occur at the nodes of Ranvier. During depolarization, when the sodium ions diffuse into the cell, the sodium ions then diffuse inside the length of the axon. When the sodium ions reach neighboring nodes, the increase in positive charge at that node depolarizes that node to threshold, causing an action potential. So, for the nerve impulse, during depolarization, sodium ions diffuse into and along the axon. Action potentials only occur at the nodes of Ranvier. Depolarization at a neighboring node breaches the threshold, causing another action potential. Sodium ions moving the other way in the axon will come into the node that is in refractory from a previous action potential and this ensures the impulses don't go backwards. Since action potentials can only occur at the nodes of Ranvier, the jumping from node to node is called saltatory conduction. It results in a faster impulse transmission as opposed to the speed the nerve impulse moves down an unmyelinated neuron.